Welcome back to another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions with the latest games releasing. We've talked about the single player component of this game already. It kind of sucks, but how's the multiplayer? Modern Warfare 2 rightfully got a lot of flack for how Infinity Ward handled things. Will Sledgehammer do any better with what is essentially the same game? Actually, yes, though it's not exactly ambitious. Pretty unambitious, actually. It's just Modern Warfare 2 with a new coat of paint. There are new guns and maps and at least one new mode, but everything we have seen, it's it's been there, done that, right? Rather than evolution of the series formula, it's the greatest hits. And given that the devs reported only at a year and a half to make a game when they normally get three, it's impressive the multiplayer is as decent as it ended up being. Again, it's Modern Warfare 2 with some new bells and whistles. A lot of the changes are pretty small, but some of the small changes changes do make a pretty big difference um the gameplay overall it is an improvement although it is mostly falling back on what has worked in the past sledgehammer games uh clearly listened to the community and made some noticeable changes that are appreciated and, and the game does feel more responsive and fun to play due to these changes stuff like slightly higher time to kill faster movement slide canceling reload canceling they make the game feel quicker uh, more responsive more fun to play uh, slide canceling in particular I I really appreciate they simplified the button combination for it a lot and that made it so you can cancel out of it by default now instead of forcing you to change your controls you can just tap the sprint button cancels right out of a slide very intuitive feels great uh, I'm sure that people very used to the controls will take a little time to get used to it but I enjoyed it right off uh, I got plenty of kills sliding all over the place like a coke down maniac Insert rickety cricket catching melon clip here. There's a lot of people playing like that now, but the tried and true method of camping just is effective. I've experienced some pretty annoying campers, uh, but it's nowhere near as bad as Modern Warfare, uh, the 2018 one at release. I feel like the faster movement keeps people moving most of the time. The other, I guess, big change to the gameplay is the addition of this thing called tack stance. You can now hold your gun at a canted angle, which allows you to aim down sights faster at the cost of accuracy. You trigger it by aiming, press it down on the stick. It's kind of cool, but it also feels like something from a game that's a lot more hardcore than this one, and I'm not sure exactly how much it adds to the experience. Sliding forces you into tack stance when you try to aim, so you're not hitting perfect shots while sliding if you got a weapon with a high rate of fire. I'll say it doesn't matter a lot. To die all the same. I mean, weapon with a high rate of fire. Kind of just blast in a way. Uh, of the 16 new maps added in Modern Warfare 3, they're all remakes of Modern Warfare 2 maps. They're good maps. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but it, it feels a little weak. I've played a lot of Call of Duty games, and I've seen these maps a million times. They're promising that there will be more maps in the future, but would I like to see some actually new maps with the allegedly new game? This is pure speculation, but they kind of feel like holdovers from the Modern Warfare 2 remake. The Modern Warfare remake that shipped with Infinite Warfare had a full multiplayer sweep, but the Modern Warfare 2 remake from 2020 was single player only. Seems like they cut the maps and they've just been sitting on them. And we're finally getting them for a premium. Uh, one thing that makes them authentic to the originals is that the spawns are still terrible. There are so many instances where you spawn and instantly die or see someone spawn right in front of you for an easy kill. The day one patch tried to address this. Sledgehammer even pulled a couple of the maps from the rotation because of the messed up spawns, but it's still a noticeable problem, especially in some of the more chaotic maps. I don't know how the balance is going to shake out with all the Modern Warfare 2 guns on top of the new Modern Warfare 3 guns. From my experience, the new guns are better, but that could be confirmation bias. Overall, things seem fairly balanced. I'm not noticing anything that's completely dominating games that you wouldn't normally see in these games. There's a lot of ARs, but doy. If you don't expect to see a lot of ARs, I, I you haven't really played these games a lot. There are a ton of guns in the game now, and honestly, to me, they're kind of starting to run together, especially with all the fake names they give them. Weapon tuning is out this year, which in my opinion is for the better. It's a fiddly waste of time, and in its place they added aftermarket parts, which are special attachments that can actually pretty significantly alter 
alter how some guns work. It's a decent idea, but like a lot of the changes made this year, feels a bit like a gimmick. I don't hate it. I don't love it, uh, which uh, it is, I mean, I guess to say a lot better than weapon tuning because I pretty much hate that. The new time to kill changes can be frustrating where it feels like you're unloading into a guy and then they one shot you. The difference feels almost unnoticeable at close ranges, but it, you really, really feel it at long range. Basically, all Sledgehammer did was turn up the health dial a little bit. By default, everybody's got 150 health rather than 100 in Modern Warfare 2. Small change, big impact. In general, it takes about one additional bullet to kill people in this game compared to last year. Many guns, especially marksman rifles, uh, which dominated the game, have all but become useless now. Getting kills in two shots with guns that used to be one-hit kills is huge. And along with some other changes to marksman rifles, like making them get no aim assist while aiming, makes these guns way worse this year overall. I never really used marksman rifles, so not really a lot of skin off my nose, but if you love these, it's gonna sting. But they did bring back some stuff that people wanted, like Dead Silence, for instance, is back. There are some new field upgrades that are nice, like the ACS that you can throw on a capture point and it'll capture it for you. Probably my favorite new piece of equipment is the Breacher Drone. It's ridiculous, extremely powerful. Uh, it's basically a, a drone that flies in a straight line and blows up anything that it hits. I'm sure some people are probably going to start to hate this thing. It's basically a grenade launcher that requires less skill to use. But as an eternal noob, I don't care. I like it. I will use it. You can deal with the Breacher drone that I will over rely on. <laughs> Now, to be fair, though, if you want access to it, you are going to have to work for it. Uh, there's a new unlock system that makes it so unlo unlocking things is a little bit unnecessarily complicated. So if you want to get certain weapons, field upgrades, aftermarket parts, you got to complete daily challenges on top of leveling up, which I don't love. I mean, just getting to a certain rank should probably be enough in a game like this. But uh, no, we live in today's gaming environment. There are ways around it. You can get unlock tokens from the zombies mode, for example, but it's still another step for unlocks that doesn't make the game better. At least the daily challenges are mostly pretty easy to finish, but I got a couple that require weapons I don't have access to, which is lame. I don't know what this armory unlock system adds to the game other than slight limits on the most hardcore players so they can't unlock everything in literally a day, but there's enough ways to circumvent the system that it just kind of feels pointless. But hey, daily challenges. Love those. Love daily challenges. What a service. What a service. Thanks, games as a service. Pretty much every gameplay mode from the past few games is here. Team Deathmatch, bread and butter, of course. Uh, there's Domination, Search and Destroy, Hardpoint, Kill Confirmed, Ground War, Invasion. I mean, there's a lot to pick from. It's it's all what you've come to expect from these games, and it feels a little better, honestly. Ground War, Invasion is still a chaotic mass of snipers. Uh, it has always been that. It's probably always going to be that. And these modes are fun to mess around with, but for me, it's, it's Team Deathmatch. That's what you come back to. Everything else is kind of a novelty, a tryout. I'm not going to say I don't like some mode, but Team Deathmatch. Seriously, that's what Call of Duty's for, right? There's only one quote-unquote new gameplay mode, War, which is a fun slaughter fest, but with only one map. Uh, I'm sure there will be more maps eventually, but it feels pretty tacked on when there's just one map. You complete a series of objectives on a linear map. First, you have to capture some SAM sites, escort a tank, reprogram two computers, and you gotta do it before time runs out. Each team alternates, and it's pretty fun, uh, but there's not that much to it, and there's one, there's a single map. It's a linear map mode with a single map and zombies. So uh, zombies, not much to write home about here. It's mostly a reskin DMZ mode with no PVP elements. Pretty dull. Like the Treyarch zombies modes are getting a little stale, sure, but it's better than this. Like I, when I say a reskin DMZ, I mean it. Like ahead of time, we were told that it was going to incorporate the rules from DMZ. I don't think it set in until I played it that it literally, it's just DMZ with some zombies thrown in. It's still set on a big map that inexplicably has multiple teams Teams on it. Uh, it's just that instead of competing for resources, you just kind of run around and there's also other player. The map also just Urzikstan from Warzone 2.0. Literally the same map, just with zombies randomly scattered around. Feels empty, honestly pretty boring. Things get more interesting the closer you get to the city center and the tougher zombies start showing up. But this really struggled to keep my interest, which sucked because, yeah, again, we've seen a lot of Treyarch zombies modes and I'm sure for people, the repetition was a lot, but ultimately I'm fond of these modes and this was not what I was looking for. I like the carefully crafted 
dense zombie maps, not this open world boar fest zombie map. Um, so, but at least um, to say this, the overall multiplayer experience, not bad. I never experienced any connection problems or significant bugs. Multiplayer plays well, but I'll say the CODHQ thing is, is it's awful. Gotta, gotta talk about that. It's the new launcher required to access everything Call of Duty. If you want to play Warzone, you got to select it through the Call of Duty HQ. The problem is it's not really a launcher. It's Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer with a new game, which means the 100 gigabyte download is required on top of Warzone and the single player campaign. Activision claims it's meant to make things easier for players, but it doesn't. It makes it worse. Before this update, you know you could launch Warzone on PC by launching Warzone on PC. Now you have to do it by loading up Modern Warfare 3 then selecting Warzone, which closes the game and opens up Warzone. I mean, I guess in some ways it streamlines the convoluted DLC uh, content stuff from the previous games, but those were to keep the ballooning install size of games in check, at least in theory. This only makes it worse by forcing you to have Modern Warfare 3 installed to play the free-to-play game Warzone. Uh, even if you do not own Modern Warfare 3. I will admit, even with all of my complaints, I had a lot of fun actually playing the multiplayer. The changes, uh, they're pretty small overall, but they do make for a faster, more intense and exciting multiplayer experience. I mean, I'll say everything that makes multiplayer better could have been done with a patch and everything else doesn't have a huge impact. It's basically Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer repackaged. Uh, so there's a lot of content here for people who skipped last year but the amount of actual new stuff we're getting is pretty abysmal considering the asking price 70 bucks for what feels like a 30 dollar dlc maybe should have skipped a year but activision knows people will be buying this either way so why not charge more than double for barely any of the content really disappointing honestly for us i'm sure not for activision i'm sure activision's probably like yes excellent very good not satisfying <laughs> we'll never be satisfied but but good but good and that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks changing max the lead.